You know, I love lever actions. All shapes, all sizes, brass receivers, black completely out, 4570, 44 magnum, suppressed, unsuppressed, and all of the above. Except for that one. <laughs> that one's ugly. Hello, friends. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Pat. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Marlin Dark 336. This Marlin Dark has quickly became a favorite of mine, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Several of you know that I picked up a Henry X in 4570. Now, I'm not going to place one above the other because I like them both equally as much, but the Marlin's gone out with me on the last several range trips, and my Henry X thinks I'm dead. It is sitting in the safe, scared to death that my wife is going to sell it for what I told her I paid for it. But, now, this Marlin, I'm really loving it. I had done a previous video on it. It was just a first shots and impressions video, and I, in the description below, I will link to that. If you haven't seen that, you can slide back and watch it, or you can watch this and then slide back. It's not going to make a difference either way. But during that video... I had decided there were a couple of things I wanted to change about the Marlin. The first, the biggest thing, was the trigger. The factory rating on the trigger is 5.5 pounds, and the best I could get it to pull was 7. I completely disassembled the rifle, cleaned it, deburred it, and the best I could get it to pull was a 6 and 3 quarters. So amongst the trigger, the safety delete, and I wanted a quick takedown screw. Those were the three things that were on my list. So I went to the Ranger Point website, and things escalated. For some reason, not only did the trigger, and yeah, it, you'll see, this thing just went wide open. We threw the entire website at this rifle, with the exception of just a couple of parts. So what I'm going to do is going to detail this rifle. We're going to see the changes that we made. We're going to detail why we made them, and then show the outcome. So now, let's go over to the tailgate and give this thing a good look. It's pretty incredible how throwing this, this, and this resulted in throwing pretty much the entire range of point precision catalog at the Marlin Dart. Of course, the elephant in the room is this really nice rail. This is their M-Lock rail. Now, it looks like it added weight, but it absolutely did not. The rifle still balances very well, and we have added a ton of function to it. Of course, you have M-lock slots. We have QDs on the right, center, and left. So it'll fit you ambidextrously all over the place. They've got a very burly tenon in there. It's much larger than the factory piece that only held the wood. There's simply a dovetail groove in the bottom of the barrel. And what you do is you drive it out. And once you get that centered, you just take a pin, punch it, and that holds it in place. We've got two sets of screws here. This is for your end cap models. This is for your barrel band models. And what I'm going to wind up doing to plug that is I am going to take another screw and just put a blind nut on the back. So that right there will look like it's filled up. So I'll get rid of that. Of course, we'll go over more on that muzzle brake later. That is just sweetness. They call it the Comet. I'm sure you can see the Comet right there. So now this M-Lock facilitates quivers such as this Hoptic USA. Now as for this trigger, this is the moment of truth. I just checked the chamber. We have nothing to worry about. Let's see if we can get us a good clean pull on this Timney. Right there. Three and a quarter pounds. That is half as light as the original trigger. That has made the absolute difference in this. The trigger is short, sweet, and crisp, and I love it. Of course, on this safety delete, I have got a brain between my two ears. We still have half cock. If you're truly worried about it, you don't have to have one in the chamber. 
we've got all sorts of safeties that are already there and I wanted this gone. And all that does is just plugs it forward and backwards. That way you get rid of your safety and plug the hole. This light and loading gate. I am really loving this. The original one was really stiff. It bit my finger several times. So now you just slide one right in. Super easy. I am digging that a bunch. Now, of course, I chose these three pieces in silver because that gives just a little bit of contrast to this all black rifle. Might as well have something just a little shiny on there. Now, as for this takedown screw, let me go ahead and roll in some footage. This takedown screw to me is an important thing because I shoot suppressed. Shooting suppressed has the capacity to back a lot of dirt down into the action because you are simply backing up pressure and that junk comes back here. The factory screw is a Torx bit. Why in the world would we want a Torx bit on something that we might have to service in the field? We might as well put this quick takedown screw on it and make it look a little shinier. I really like the look of that. Might as well make it look a little better and a lot more functional. And of course, while I was in this thing, I got in there and did a little action slicking. Golly bum. It is absolutely a world slicker. I've got a buddy that when I bought this, he said, you're going to love it until you shoot it. He said, those Remlins, you're going to hate it. Freedom Arms Group ruined Remlin, blah, blah, blah. I know Remington's in bankruptcy right now. So there's some issues there, but as for this one, the quality has been there. I actually handed this to my buddy the other day, and he handled it. He felt it, and for him to be such a strong skeptic, he had nothing bad to say about it. So I'm definitely digging what we've got going on here. Now, I did put the Comet muzzle brake on this. I had done one previous video with the Comet brake on my 4570, and you can notice a difference in the felt recoil. So naturally, after enjoying the Comet muzzle brake on the 4570, we put it on the 3030 as well. Now, the fact that this is M-Lock, we've already gone over how you can add the Hoptic USA quiver there. But right here, you can add rail sections. And what I would want to do, I've seen so many guys put rail sections underneath. I'm not going to single anyone out. But they're putting a handgun style light with a toggle back here that really doesn't look good and it's not ergonomic. So now let's say that you live in grizzly bear country or something, you know, I don't know. Or even if you live in a restricted state and you wanted to make this your home defense gun. You could put you a light on this and turn this into a home defense style weapon. Now this Enforce WML here. Right here is your pressure pad. So right there on the back is your on off. The way that that is sculpted, that angle, I am right handed so my hand's going to be on the other side. I'm just doing this for the filming. So when I'm holding it, my thumb is kind of already there. You see how that just lines right up? Now I'd have that in there, but my rail section is on order. So I'm kind of not ready to do it but you can see exactly how that mocks up. Nice and neat and tidy and absolutely easy to hit. Just works out really, really well. So that will be on here in the future. So now let's roll some dramatic before and after footage. If you've made it this far through the video, thanks. Now, if you've made it this far through the video, I may be preaching to the choir because a lot of your wood and bluing only guys may have already skipped out because we took this too far. As far as I'm concerned, that is ignoring the full potential of a lever action rifle. Thankfully, the manufacturers are starting to thread these because they make excellent suppressor hosts and companies like Ranger Point are going through and creating accessories and parts to modify these to play to their strong points. So now, if you aren't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would consider. 
If you aren't a Patreon member, I would really appreciate it if you consider. There's a link to my Patreon below. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can see all of this stuff weeks before you see it on YouTube. So, my Instagram is below. But after all of that, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.